Good morning, good afternoon, good evening. Greetings to you from whatever part of the world or whatever time of the day you might be watching this video. My name is A.B. Bracewell from Ready for Relationship Consulting and I appreciate you taking out the time to press play and listening to what I have to say. So today's topic is red flags and triggers. Red flags and triggers when it comes to dating and relationships. You see, it's a very thin line between the two in the confusion or the misinterpretation of what a red flag is and what a trigger is can either lead to self-sabotage and missing out on a great relationship or it can lead us down the road of hurt and pain into an unhealthy relationship that we should have never explored to begin with. So what is a red flag? A red flag is a warning sign. It a red flag elicits that fight, fight, or excuse me, that fight, flight, or freeze response inside of us. When it's a response to a behavior that's either unhealthy, that's suspicious, or undesirable, and is usually connected to someone that we're dating or in a relationship with. And what's a trigger? A trigger is also a warning sign. And it also elicits that same fight, flight, or freeze response inside of us to a behavior that is either unhealthy, suspicious, or undesirable. But a trigger is often connected to individuals that we used to date or used to be in a relationship with. So you see the slight difference? You see what happens and what we often do. We often label things as a red flag when it's actually a trigger. What we do, we take our fears, we take our personal insecurities, and we twist them and make them into the flaws of others as a way to rationalize and justify the reason why we are taking these hurts, these fears, and these insecurities from our past into our present. And when we see certain things or certain behaviors in an individual, we'll label that as a red flag when the reality is it's a trigger. Let me give you a quick example, a simple example. Say if you meet someone and you're interested in getting to know them better and you call and you text them, but this individual responds slower than you're comfortable with, slower than what you prefer. What would all, some of us often do in that situation? We'll label that as a red flag. We'll start to create stories and saying that this person might be dating multiple people or they might even be married or that they don't like us or they don't have time for us because their slow response probably triggered something in us. It triggered a fear or insecurity or an event that actually happened in our past when we found out that someone that we used to date um, or used to be in a relationship with when they responded to us slowly it came out that they was actually cheating so something that's a trigger we'll label as a red flag and what we usually do in that situation we'll either fight or we'll flight we'll leave the situation um, because we was too scared to be vulnerable and talk about what was going on and what we was experiencing or we never just deal with that Thing from the past and we carry that insecurity from one relationship to the next what also happens and is as just as common and is even more dangerous than what I previously talked about is when we see a red flag and we misinterpret a red flag and we allow red flags to trigger not a fight flight or freeze response but we allow red flags to trigger a caring, a nurturing, or empathetic response into us. For example, we meet somebody, a young lady meets someone, and he speaks about his history. He has a checkered past. Um, he talks about his poor relationship with his mom. He talks about the fights and the arguments that he is always in with his sisters or with his family. He talks about how his ex-girlfriend um, call the cops on him multiple times. He speaks about how it's hard for him to hold down a job because his boss uh, doesn't understand him or um, is disrespectful. 
those things are red flags. But a lot of the times we will allow those red flags to trigger empathy, caring, nurturing. And instead of run, running away from those red flags, what do we do? We go towards it because we feel like we're the ones that can probably help this individual. So in that situation, we see the red flag, but we don't walk away from the red flag. We interpret it as something else. We allow that red flag to trigger something else inside of us. And what usually happens when we get into a relationship where we ignore red flags? You see, that's basically what I wanted to talk about today. Those red flags and those triggers. And hopefully being able to see the difference between the two and identify and uh, dif differentiate the differences from what's a red flag and what's a trigger. So the next time um, you come in contact with that, you'll be better equipped. But the only way to really become better equipped to, to identify the differences is to know yourself. We have to know who we are. We have to know what's a red flag for us. And we also have to know what's our own personal fears, triggers, and insecurities. And we have to deal with it accordingly. I speak about this a lot more in my upcoming book from relationship, ready for relationship um, is the title, ready for relationship, excuse me. So um, keep an ear out for, for, that, for that book. It'll be coming out soon. If you have any questions, if you have any comments, please put them below. Please, you can feel free to hit me in my um, instant messenger or you can email me at ready for relationship consultant. Hope you have a great day.